Hello everybody and welcome to Gotten X Gaming. My name is Emp One Way. I am your host here on the channel and we are bringing you something a little bit different. Not regular gameplay. We are going to do Software Inc. Alpha 9, but it's going to kind of be a tutorial, if you will, or maybe a how-to, tips and tricks, um, kind of the best way to get the most out of the game in playing this game and try to get to a huge company. I will kind of flash through some of the screens, shots of a bigger company that I have that's like ranked number one and things like that. Um, for the interest of this particular like walkthrough guide, I am going to be using mods. So we're going to call it a beginner's guide. Uh, I'm going to start with the basics right up front. And without too much intro here, I want to kind of jump into things right away. So first and foremost is creating your character. Now, you may not think a lot about this, but it's kind of important certain aspects of your character. Now, what he looks like is not such a big deal. Um, you can kind of go through and randomize until you have somebody, or you can go mess around with the settings here to see what you get, uh, to see what kind of sits and what falls. And if you want to, like I said, change things, you can manually. The, there's not a lot of depth to it, but it's enough to kind of keep it interesting. Go ahead and name your player anything you want. In this case, we're going to name him M one way after me, of course, and we're going to let that kind of fall the way it sits. You do have to name your company, so we're going to call this the Beginner's beginners if i could type that would be fantastic beginner's guide is the name of the company uh beginner's guide co company um now we're going to go into personality and personality is important i mean not so much so in the beginning because you are the main character or you're the first uh you know employee of this new company but some of these traits are very important going forward now when you're developing your character you don't want to pick somebody who is stubborn or an introvert because they're going to have to work with other people and you don't want them to be short tempered or cocky because these do not kind of fit well with most personalities. Now you do what you want. I mean, don't get me wrong, but trying to get to the best possible thing that we can here for what we want to try to develop here into a huge big company. I mean, we want to get something that's going to be pretty good. Generous. I'm not really too keen on. I do sort of like flirt and like being optimistic fast learner very social little on the lazy side but that's okay because your character kind of gets a buff for being the startup of the company anyway so no worries there as far as like the laziness part of his concern although they have done updates where his mood can be affected now so his his effectiveness will go down uh if you're not careful so just don't work him a long time and he's pretty good for the most part, but that's what it looks like there. So now if you want to move on to like a great company and you want to start off really strong, you're going to want to get rid of your lead skill. Now down the road, you want to be a lead, but you can always send out for education. And as far as I like to go, I like to take out the marketing aspect of it as well. I always tend to hire a marketer and I like to have somebody who specializes in marketing, keep it as a separate entity from anything else that I'm doing just to kind of focus on it because marketing in this game I think is a really big deal and it's one of those things that's kind of a fine-tuned thing and you got to get it kind of right as far as specialization goes that kind of falls on you guys to what you want to do first and foremost um for this particular tutorial or beginner's guide we're going to go ahead and say we're going to work on a 2d editor as our first piece of software that'll be way down the road though but this is something definitely to plan out for um when we want to develop his skills as a as a software engineer let's say so programming designer and art all go up to the top we want him to be able to do all of those things because we're going to be doing contracts to make money now i'm going to go in here and toggle on my particular mods and in this case i'm not going to be doing um this guide for mods i can do something separate for mods if you'd guys like you let me know in the comments below also let me know what you want to see what particular tips and tricks you want to see for this particular game this happens to be a six pack mod um it has like a bunch of different things in there, multiple years, multiple options, uh, gives you different software things to do. It gives you um, like calculator software and CAD software and things like that. And then the hardware mod is exactly what it says. You go and develop motherboards and cases and monitors and hard drives and processors and all that stuff. Um, once we get those set up there, we go up to here to free play and we have the MYMO. It's multiple year, multiple options. Again, like I said, I'm using this for that particular reason we're going to start off with 100 bucks i mean we're going to start off with as low as we can possibly go 
We're going to start in 1970, just for kicks and giggles. We're going to go into the far, so we have plenty of room to expand. And we're going to leave it at one day. I found that you can go here and do this up to eight days if you want per month, which is kind of crazy. It takes a long time to develop software as it is. And if you go eight days, it makes it even harder. Um, three days is kind of a good spot to be in if you want to make the months last a little bit longer. Um, but I tend to go one day because I've been doing it for quite some time. And I like to get things rolling when I do them. So let's move on now. Um, we've talked about the personality. We talked about the skills. And we've got our character. He's set to go. That's kind of where you want to be at as far as that goes. So we're going to start the game up. And then we're going to come in and we're going to set up our first game, our first company, our first building, right? That's what we want to do. So we're going to be doing that. And we're going to show this in a way so that you can maximize everything that you need to do as far as this stuff goes now like i said before they've made some changes so you got to be careful you got to get your guy to have some amenities that are going to keep him happy again it doesn't take much but he definitely needs some amenities to keep him effective now he can't work too many hours so you can't make him like an eight to eight guy 8 a.m to 8 p.m to try to bang out as many contracts as possible to make as much money as fast as possible anymore it just doesn't happen and in this case here we're going to go take a loan because we need money to build our building we only have a hundred bucks so let's go back and do that. We'll go get ourselves a loan. First and foremost, we're going to take out about 10 grand. That's all we really need. Uh, we'll pay it back in 24 months because we're going to pay it off faster than that anyway. We have 10,000. We're going to have to pay 20,000 back if we let it pay out over the life of the loan for 24 months, but we're not going to do that. Like I said, we only need a few dollars to get ourselves kind of going here. We're going to create ourselves a little 4x4 four four box. And again, this is just to get all the necessities that you need to start up. You don't need to go super fancy. You can always knock it down and rebuild. This is the best way to kind of get yourself going and started so that you can just get yourself off the ground, so to speak, right? You're starting up here. It's a startup company. Now you can have some fun with this. You can go ahead and this doesn't cost you anything to go in here and add some bricks in if you want to do it that way or these bigger bricks. We'll do the bigger bricks and we'll do some I'll do some interior design here. Just a little something simplistic. Actually, Let's go crazy. We'll do that. And then the floor, we're going to make it a nice wood floor. And then we can go in and change the colorings of everything as well. Now, we could do a nice red brick on the exterior if we wanted to. That kind of looks ridiculous. Maybe we make it a nice purple building or something like that, right? I don't think so. I think we're going to kind of stick to the grayish color of it. We want to make it a little bit on the tan side and give it some life, but nothing too much. It's got to be somewhat dull. Interior-wise, you do anything you want. I mean, you just go for it. In this case, they have it as white, but we're going to do something greenish in a way. Uh, maybe a light green. No, no. We're going to, let's go more green, and we'll do it a lighter green, right? Something like that. So it's not too harsh, right? And then the floors. I like to keep the floors looking like a floor, you know? Like it's a wood floor, so let's make it brownish in a way. Um, we can do kind of something like that. And that's a nice little color there, too. Apply that, and there you go. So there you have That's where you do to make it more interesting for yourself so to speak, but that's really all you need as far as the basics of the of the building itself goes. Now we're gonna go in and we need some pieces to work with, right? So we need a, a desk and we need our chair. Go for the cheapest chair possible to begin with. Again, if you wanna do something to kind of keep yourself interested, change the color of this of the furniture. I can easily come in here and change the color of the desk if I wanted to. Uh, going up here and let's make it uh, an orange desk. You know, that looks absolutely ridiculous, but it is what it is. We could do that to kind of keep ourselves uh, interested in what we're trying to do here and what we're trying to accomplish you need a computer you need some ventilation you also need some heat so the heat's going to go right here by the front door inside and we have that need some light as well uh if you hit the z key on your keyboard it'll give you the bird's eye view which i absolutely love because it makes it much easier to place the lights in these tiles and trying to figure out where you can you can't put it over like a desk because it can't reach it so you definitely need to kind of make sure you put it in the right spot so we're going to put it there so it gives us good light coverage we don't really need that much to be honest the one light would have been more than enough but again we're going to do this just to give it a little more coziness or whatever so for effectiveness reasons at this point i mean do we need to really add anything else absolutely not we have everything we need here right now to start things up and get going um we can add a plant to make it just a little more interesting that spot is already occupied so let's put a plant here all the way in the corner and we'll do it that way so that he has something pretty to look at and keep his effectiveness up. Great. So we have our year. We have our monies that we've borrowed to get ourselves going. We have 
um, everything we need there. So this is just a necessities. Can always rebuild and expand later on. You can build onto this if you want to. I tend to take this little box and make it my reception area after I decide to expand the company into a bigger building later on so that's kind of why i do this little box because it makes a nice little reception area and i can glass it out later on put windows all around and make it look really pretty if that's what i want to do and make it look really really interesting at that point so now we're into things here and it's uh 10 a.m already wow and uh my guy's nowhere to be found i wonder where he could be his state is at home he's at home currently right now he will be coming in tomorrow which is going to be right today so now we're going to get into uh, the basics of starting up. You got to think like a startup and you got to save um, money. You got to make money is what it comes down to. So we have five grand left over. We want to pay off that loan as soon as possible, though. And it doesn't take much to do it. So we come into contracts right here down at the bottom of the screen. Contract work, bottom left side. And we have these different contracts that we can work on. And it tells you what the kind, what, what they are. They've updated it. So now you know how many lines of code you need. It's going to be horrible quality. What your money you're going to get, the penalties and the penalty per bug, if any at all. So um, that's what we're going to look at here. So we're going to do this one here. It's a horrible embedded system. And it's the name of its clock or whatever. It needs about 4,300 lines of code. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to accept that one. They give you some money up front, like 1,300. And they pay you the rest at the end of it. Like any other typical contract work that's out there. So now we're going to speed this up so that we can get into it. And have our guy come in and actually work on it. So he's going to sit down. You'll see up here the progress of it. Well, let's stop that for a quick second, slow it down for a minute. You can see when you hover over it with your mouse, you mouse over, you'll get the little branch on the left side that shows you the actual progress of the pieces that are being worked on. In this case, it's system design. That's what the blue is. It's design. And you are looking at the embedded system itself. We have one month left to play this. It's actually really two months. You have the full month near and then the month, the, the following month as well to work on this when it says one month. Um, that's what you really have on this. So this is almost completed. We're going to speed this up until it uh, does complete. And we're going to then, at this point, you promote it. You want to overdevelop it. So when it gets to that point, you want to promote it into alpha. And this is alpha. And now they've added this nice little little new thing here where the code, the line of lines of code they wanted, the 4300 that they expect, um, or what's going to be needed to reach that horrible quality, is actually here for you. So you can use this as a guideline, and it's going to negative... As it counts down and adds lines of code, it kind of subtracts it from the number and it gets closer to zero. When it gets to zero, you're pretty much ready to throw this into beta phase at that point. And you can do that when it hits it there. So once you get it down to that zero, you get up to a few couple hundred maybe in, you go promote. And it's going to say, are you sure you want to promote out of the alpha phase? You can only improve the quality of the product once you leave alpha. And that's what we want to do. We want to go to beta at this point. There's a little bit of a delay as they transition over into beta. And you can force beta if you want to. You don't have to. But you can force beta if you want to. So. We are going to let this force into beta. And we're going to release it. And then we get $9,193. Top left hand corner. You can see the money that you get. And you see your money goes up as well. So we went to beta and we released it right away. I'm sure that there were some bugs in the system. I kind of did that on purpose. So you could take a look at this and see. So in this case, there was 40 bugs at $9.85 a bug. Took off $394. So you can definitely maximize your profits on this if you're careful in making sure you take out the bugs. So you could have let it work the rest of the day and then get out the bugs. But in any case, it's considered done because the quality was where it needed to be. Outstanding. We wanted horrible quality and we got to outstanding. We delivered it a month early. Why is this important? Well, they've added a couple of new pieces again if you go through... Some of their their uh, development notes, developer notes, you will see that there is reputation into this as well. And I've seen this before in the past when I've played this game, but I think they've kind of balanced it a little bit better. If you do a bunch of contracts and they're later, they're going finished or they don't meet the quality, you're not going to get as good contracts going forward. And it's going to hurt your reputation, your reputation for doing contract work. And this plays down the line as well for deals too, which we'll get into at a later time. Not so important right now, but something definitely to think about in doing this you want to make sure that you're not known for having a ton of bugs you have great quality but you have a bunch of bugs that's going to play into this when you go looking for new contracts down the road you will see the contracts start to dwindle you may not even get offered any for a few months and things like that so and you definitely won't get the better contracts if that's what you want to continue to do is contract work now we're going to go ahead and we're going to be the renegade here we're going to take a look and see what this loan is and we have 19,000 left on it so we'll have to do 
one more contract work before we go forward with that. So we're also going to come up here quickly and take a look at your um, your expenses and your and your income and things like that. So this is this is the books right here. You're looking at the ledger of the company in their profits and earnings and shares and whatever else. And I mean, and uh, the money they're making and losing and spending and everything else. So up on the right side, they have added this nice little new thing here with the bills. Um, you can also look at construction too. It breaks it down. So it's breaking down the construction, the room and the segment for me, 82, 2880 and 895. So we can see where we're spending on that. And then we can take a look again back at bills. They're going to break this down going further even more for you. So you can see like what the deals break down to be and things like that, which is going to be pretty cool stuff. So you can see what you're spending in electricity, rent, and water. And that those numbers change as well as you add more expenses in. You can see all the expenses for this particular month. As these things come in, we spent a couple thousands of dollars in construction. And we picked up some money in a loan, of course. And then, then the interest that we have as well uh, for our profit at the bottom. And then here we have a net profit of 10504 because that's what we got from the contract itself. So... Again, pretty important stuff. And then they have the charts, which makes it look a little prettier if you want to look at charts instead. But going back in, let's speed through the rest of this day. Get him out of here. It's too late to take on another contract, even though I know we can get it done. I'm just going to start off with a new fresh day and a new fresh month when he comes back to get a new contract. So we'll let that go. We'll bump this back up here. And we may have been actually gotten offered more contracts. I don't even know. I didn't really take a close look at it, but sometimes you'll get offered more contracts. So here's another embedded system. Maybe we want to do logistics instead. And we can see what that's about. So it's bad. And this one is bad. Let's do the horrible one first. 4,485 lines of code. You can see how many designers, programmers, and artists are needed as well, which is important. Going down the road when you start developing software of your own, that's more important than so than here. But this does help here as well if you're taking on bigger contracts that are like four months long. They may want more designers or may require more designers to make it work out better for you. In this case here, the bugs are $6 and penalties $4,000 if it doesn't meet the quality that we want, which is horrible, and we know that's easy for us to accomplish. So we'll accept the work for this one. It'll be dumped onto us, and we're going to get ahead and jump into it. We'll wait for our man to come in and start working on it. We accepted that contract. We got our money up front, about $1,200. He's going to go up there. He's going to develop this rather quickly because it's pretty easy embedded system. It's easy code work for a, a guy of our caliber with his kind of skills and stuff like that. So we've got two contracts. We'll play off our loans, and then we're going to get into maybe in the next episode we'll get into more stuff as far as developing our first software and maybe even educating our guy. We'll do a bunch of contracts, get him to a point where we can educate him a little bit more in certain areas so that we know what we want to work on as far as the software we want to start, our first software that we want to start in that regard. So... We're going to let this go up here. We're going to speed it up a little bit to get rid of the, rid of the rest of the lines of the code on here. And we'll get this down to zero. And then we will promote it into beta. And we'll let him work on it for in beta until about 4 o'clock when he leaves. And then we'll wind up releasing it. Get as many bugs as possible out of that. So, guys, I want to thank you for checking this out with me. Please leave your comments below. Let me know if you want to see something differently on this. Leave a like for the video. That definitely helps the channel out as well as we try to do some stuff, new stuff here and new things. Uh, also, be careful to watch for your time because once he leaves and it switches the day, you lose that time and you can go late on a contract and that can definitely hurt you. I may actually show you a late contract just to see what it, just so you can see what it looks like at the end of all of it. That's six, six, 17 bugs and we're going to release that. And we picked up another $10,000 outstanding quality, it tells us up here in the top left. So we know that that did pretty good. That's kind of a, your news spot right there. Let you know of the happenings and going-ons that are going on around you. So we'll take a quick look at that. It was 11 219 off all. And there was 20 bugs in it. So we paid $121 in bugs, which is fine. Works out pretty good, actually, when you think about it. So anyway, again, thank you. I will see you around the channel. And goodbye now.